We sing out praises to our King, for He is the King of Kings. We sing out praises to our King, for He is the King. We sing out praises to our King, for He is the King of Kings. We sing out praises to our King, for He is the King. Give Him glory, 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 for He is the King. We sing our praises to our King, for He is the King of Kings. We sing our praises to our King, for He is the King. We sing our praises to our King, for He is the King of Kings. We sing our praises to our King, for He is the King. Give Him glory, 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 for He is the King. He reigns forever. He reigns forever. He reigns forever and evermore. He reigns forever. He reigns forever. He reigns forever and evermore. Welcome. I'm Matt Olin, co-founder of Charlotte is Creative. And I'm Tim Miner, Matt's partner in Charlotte is Creative. And on behalf of Charlotte Rescue Mission, we'd like to take a moment to thank Greater Charlotte Automotive Dealers, Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated, Truist, Rogers Builders, and Ren Group for making this event possible by underwriting the costs so that you can attend for free. Now, this is a very special evening, but the way we're holding this event is deeply unusual. We wish that all of us could gather together in one room the way this event has happened in years past. I mean, as helpful as virtual gatherings like this are, there's just no substitute for in-person connection. And for someone battling addiction, isolation can have a catastrophic effect. Addiction thrives in loneliness. And since social interaction has been severely limited this year, substance abuse has been on the rise. Since COVID-19 dramatically changed the landscape of our world in March, Mecklenburg County has seen a 24% increase in drug overdose emergency calls and alcohol sales have risen 30%. And that's why we are so grateful for the presence of this organization in our community. Charlotte Rescue Mission is an addiction recovery program that serves our community's most vulnerable, providing their four month recovery program free of charge. And at the core of Charlotte Rescue Mission is a desire for transformation. Now more than ever before, Charlotte Rescue Mission has a pivotal role to play in our community. We are so grateful that wherever you are, you've chosen to spend some time with us, learning how lives are being transformed. And now we'll turn it over to Tony Marciano, president and CEO of Charlotte Rescue Mission, who will share some of this amazing organization's history. Hi, I'm Tony Marciano. For the last 24 years, I've had the privilege of serving as President and CEO of Charlotte Rescue Mission. I've had the joy of watching hundreds of men and women walk through the doors of Charlotte Rescue Mission, having their lives transformed. You know, they came to us struggling with an addiction to drugs and alcohol, and through your support, their life has 
become just radically different. But let me take you back to when we were founded. In fact, sometimes people say to me, Tony, did you found Charlotte Rescue Mission? And I have to say, no, I'm not that old. You know, we were founded in 1938 by nine Christian businessmen. And one of our founders was the father of evangelist Billy Graham. And they had such a heart for our most fragile neighbors. They fed, they sheltered, they clothed them. But they saw something that we also saw decades later. And that was people walking through our doors and struggling with an addiction to drugs and alcohol. You know, it's been said that one out of four people struggle or have somebody in their life who struggles with an addiction to drugs and alcohol. And it may be a family member, a friend, a coworker, or a relative. And we see this in the folks that walk through our doors. And so Charlotte Rescue Mission made a commitment to this concept of transformation. And we would do what everyone said could never be done, that we would provide free, professional, Christian residential recovery services for the poor, the destitute, and the disenfranchised while sharing the good news of God's love that is found in Jesus Christ. And we do that by working from the inside out to address the root cause. And we want to see our graduates become a part of the fabric of our community. In other words, we want them to be employees with a dream of becoming business owners and tenants with a dream of becoming homeowners. And your support allows our graduates to remain clean and sober. You know, people often ask me, what's your success rate, Tony? And 80% of our graduates, six months after completing our programs, are still clean and sober. But let me tell you more importantly what you've allowed to see happen in their lives. You know, they come to us with tons of baggage, not luggage. They often carry maybe a few items, sometimes nothing, when they walk through the doors of the Charlotte Rescue Mission. But they come with some horrific baggage. And your support, your generosity, your partnership with Charlotte Rescue Mission allows them to achieve their God-given potential. So it's really on their behalf, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your support. Thank you for investing in Charlotte's most fragile neighbors. All God's best to you. God bless. My name is Jovan. I am from Hudson. Um, I come from a musical background, um, musical family. Um, from maybe about seven years old to 14, I was accepted to Juilliard School of Art in New York, um, New York City. Um, that was the that was my highlight of pretty much my life. Um, my mother, she was my motivator. She was my um, my manager, my mentor. Um, but uh, on the other side, um, it was very uh, abusive, um, mentally abusive, physically abusive, verbally abu abusive. Um, I struggled a lot with um, Bugatas, um, my mother would use uh, the Bible to her advantage. Um, you know, it was more of a, trying to earn um, her love the same way to earn God's love. Since 15, I had been uh, in a drug addiction, uh, alcohol and a drug, uh, drug problem, a serious struggle. called up Charlotte Rescue Mission and um, I told them that I needed a program that was uh, that um, was faith-based um, also with the 12 steps since I've been here I've, I'm coming up on nine months sober um, nine months as a resident um, I have uh, I've been able to work through making peace with the past um, in that book um, not a uh, being able to understand what's going on with myself, what has been running, um, what's been going on with my emotions, my feelings, what's going on, you know, up in my up <laughs> upstairs in my head, um, that uh, a lot of my past is not because of me. Um, that it also really it helped me realize that my mother is still sick too. What I, what happened to me isn't to, isn't isn't supposed to keep me in this place feeling like I'm responsible. <laughs> My mother, <clears throat> she had it bad too when she was growing up. Her father was physically abusive to her. She also had um 
the opportunity to go to Juilliard when she was in fifth grade and her father didn't let her go. Working the Making Peace with Your Past book, it's helped me to open my eyes to this and to learn acceptance just for how the way things are. And it isn't the end. Um, um, I'll be starting school in about two weeks. Um, I've made the choice to let the past be in the past and I'm moving on to the medical field. Um, I'll be taking up phlebotomy, um, voc rehab uh, through rebound. Um, voc rehab will be helping uh, to make that happen. Um, after uh, completion of the phlebotomy certification, I'll, I'll be uh, working and moving into uh, the halfway house uh, next door. I'm hoping that at some point um, in my recovery, I'll be able to get with some with some friends and give a little bit of what I love to do, a little bit of my passion um, back to recovering, back to Charlotte Western Mission. I really do. I really do. I'm Sharon Bremer, Chief Development Officer at Charlotte Rescue Mission, and I'm on the campus of Rebound, our men's facility. I'm here to take you on a tour to show you the place where transformation happens. I'm Bill Lockley, Program Director here at Rebound, and this is our chapel. And there's a lot of things that happen here in our chapel. We have chapel classes every Thursday and Sunday afternoons. We have Bible study classes here. All of our educational classes for the guys are done here in the chapel. So it's news from 8 o'clock in the morning till about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We have guest speakers who come in. We have volunteers who come in. We use it to brief volunteers on expectations. We also have meetings in here. So it's news for a variety of things, not just for our chapel services. We do have a medical team on both campuses. Our nurses and medical technicians handle basic sick needs and medical calls for residents. They handle the distribution of medications that they might be taking, and they coordinate any outside appointments that our residents might need, whether that is doctors, dentists, or mental health care. We have an amazing fitness center on both campuses, and we have volunteer-led fitness classes for the residents that contribute to the holistic approach of recovery. This amazing gym was the legacy project of one of our former board members. He knew how important fitness and health was to what we do in recovery. So he reached out to the fitness community and they contributed all the gym equipment and donations to make this project a reality. The dining room at Rebound is a special place because so many amazing things happen here. Every day our residents gather around the table for meals and every holiday we open our doors to the community for a community meal and anyone is welcome. But the real magic of Charlotte Rescue Mission is looking around the tables at the residents and connecting over a meal. You see all the residents sitting at the tables talking to one another. You realize that our community is just a tiny microcosm of everything our world tells us is so divisive right now. When our volunteers serve, they have the opportunity to sit down and talk with the residents and interact with them and realize we have more in common with each other and more understanding. This is where the lives are transformed and healing takes place where people are freed of bonds of guilt and shame often associated with addiction. 
and they realize how deeply the community cares for them. One of the things people are most curious about is what do our residents do all day? Our residents have a very full day. They attend a lot of classes. Many classes are directly related to addiction and relapse prevention, while other classes are life skills focused. A majority, about 94% of our residents, are coming to us from a place of homelessness, and most fall beneath the federal poverty level, so we do offer a life skills curriculum to meet their specific needs. One of the things that makes our program so successful is the fact that we offer our residents 120 days to work individually and in a group therapy setting with licensed, certified substance abuse counselors. Oftentimes, people look at addiction as a dirty disease of choice. That is not the case with our residents. Our residents come from generations of extreme poverty, abuse, and addiction, and never had the chance to succeed as an adult. One resident shared that he grew up cutting crack cocaine with his father when he was just nine years old. It's hard to imagine how a child in that situation can succeed. So having 120 days with our counselors is amazing. It really gives them the time they need to heal the root causes that have been driving their addictions for years and to break the generational cycles that have followed. While our residents are with us, we are very intentional to help them develop a strong network of support in the community. Residents are required to attend AA and NA meetings and have a sponsor. That way they are well networked in the recovery community. Additionally, having volunteers and guest speakers in the community coming to give up their time and offer encouragement helps them build a social network as well. Addiction can be a disease of isolation and shame, so building a strong network of community is vital to their recovery. Throughout the course of our 120 day program, residents spend a great deal of time in our learning center. It is here that they engage in programming such as GED prep classes, mentoring and tutoring, job skills prep classes, and that includes basic computer skills, resume prep classes, job search strategies, and interview prep classes. Hello everyone, my name is Brittany Jenkins and I'm the Manager of Leadership Gifts here at Charlotte Rescue Mission. And today I am here at Dove's Nest, which is the location for our women's and children's program. And we are going to bring you inside for a tour of our campus. So one of the elements that makes our program so successful is that it is long-term. Um, residents receive 120 days of comprehensive care and the men and women work individually and in group settings with a licensed substance abuse counselor to get towards the root of what led to their addiction. They learn more about their triggers and work on healthy coping mechanisms to address those triggers as they occur. So like Rebound, Dozeness offers a wide variety of educational classes to prepare women for life after the program. Um, and we offer a few transitional program opportunities for our residents for them to um, think about what their life could be once they complete treatment. The first is KEY, which stands for Keep Educating Yourself. And this is an opportunity for residents to really think about what they want their career, career to be and what are some of the steps they need to take to get towards that career. And in this program, residents look for an educational program to enroll in. Um, and while they are enrolled in that program, they actually get to stay with us at Charlotte Rescue Mission for that time. The next transitional program we offer is an extension program. It essentially allows um, residents who are seeking employment to stay with us until they secure a job. Um, and in that time, um, we provide support to them. And once they secure that job, they then are able to work with our transitional counselors to find housing, whether it's with us here at Charlotte Rescue Mission or with a partner agency. So this is Noah's Ark and it's home to our Families Program. Um, the Families Program restores the relationship between a mother and her children. And in this program, mothers learn healthy parenting techniques and work to rebuild relationships. We utilize the Strengthening Families Curriculum, which is a proven program that reduces problem behaviors, delinquency, and substance abuse in children, while also improving social competencies and school performance. Hi, I'm Barbara Thomas. 
Program Director of Charlotte Rescue Mission Dove's Nest. Here we house 120 women and women and children. And what a privilege it is to be a part of God's transforming work with these women and their children. Currently, we have about six kids who are here with their moms who are in recovery as their moms are in recovery. It's such a privilege to work with these women who come here broken, addicted, sick, and who through our program and through our work leave feeling better about themselves, connected to God, and having a strong foundation for recovery. My name is Ed Price. I am the Chief Operating Officer of the Charlotte Rescue Mission and had the great pleasure and blessing of three years ago being able to start the Community Matters Cafe as an employee of the Charlotte Rescue Mission. Community Matters Cafe is an extension of the mission. And what that means is men and women who come to Charlotte Rescue Mission and go through our four month core program, they graduate. Lots of times they go back to work, they go to school, they go back home, they resume some rhythm. And in many cases, we assist them with housing and other elements of their recovery to keep them on the track of sobriety. In the case of the cafe, it, this was created so that we could provide an enhancement or an additional program to provide them more life skills. So we are really truly a life skills program and not a job opportunity or a job skills program. So the hope would be we'd ask you to visit us. We have 4,000 square feet of seating area. We've reduced the amount of seats that we have. So socially distant seating is available inside and outside. We have covered patio. Uh, we have private meeting space. We have gone beyond the requests of the state and local governments in terms of distancing between tables and seats. You'll find that there's a generous amount of space. So please come visit us. It supports the mission directly. We are a nonprofit, so everything we do and earn here goes back into the program. There's a roof up above me, and I wish they could see. My nickname was Pop Simon, and you put food on my table and shoes on my feet. I remember I come up in church. I was one of a, uh, I was the only boy I had four sisters. My mom was a Christian and hard working. My dad, he was a truck driver. And I watched his life progress uh, in alcoholism. I never thought that I would be like him because I always said I'm not going to be like my daddy. But lo and behold, as time passed, things started happening in life, and I wound up Lord, you gave me drinking. Your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. On me. I found myself after my second wife died alone and I was taking care of my mom and then she passed and I realized then that I didn't have nobody else to help me out somebody to talk to and, and I just felt so alone and so sad and I went back to drinking and drugging to try to medicate and feel that void now Lord you know I was a sinner, and I wish they could see. You know, I sin over and over, but you still forgave me. Now I know that you love me, and this I believe. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing on me and it's a lot that i've learned i can't put my hands on all of it i can't explain all of it i know somewhere down the line something changed and like i said i was a quitter i quit in the 12th grade and got a certificate instead of a diploma i quit jobs when i was a young boy because i didn't like what was going on and the thing wasn't going like i wanted and how i wanted but today i have a i have a certificate for a cnc computer programming, uh, I got my license, and uh, got my license restored. I got a vehicle paid for, waiting for this pandemic to lift so I can burn a little gas. 
Uh, I'm taking a, this is my fourth year uh, at Southern New Hampshire, and uh, I'm taking a psychology class, and I have a 4.0 grade average today. So today God has changed me. He freed me, and I know that I'm somebody. I know that he loves me, and I love myself today. And I give all the glory to God, thanking him, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and thanking Rebound, thanking all the faculty members, thanking the volunteers. And I'd like to take this time to tell the volunteers, again, that my name is Marion, and that we do appreciate your gift that you share with the addicts that are still suffering. And your gift means so much to the men and women in this program that are trying so hard to turn their life around. And i just like to take this moment and this time to say, Thank you for caring, and may God bless you. My name is Adele, and this is my second month at the cafe. I grew up in Charlotte. I moved to Charlotte in 1979. When I started drinking, it was just a lifestyle. We had, you know, graduation and keg parties back in this late 70s, and I just grew up with it around me. My rock bottom was about three years ago when I received a phone call that my father had had a stroke, and that was always my greatest fear is that, you know, losing my father because I lost my mother when she was only 59, and he was my safe harbor and my rock and my best friend, and just all the stress of that, I started to drink, but I was drinking alone and um, still functioning at work, but waking up feeling very sick and so with that said uh, my health deteriorated and they found out that I had fibrosis of the liver stage 2 and at that point at 60 I wanted to know what could I do for the next 10 years of my life so I found the Dove's Nest online and I was accepted and I went to Dove's Nest for 120 days which was the best decision of my life and through that working through that program I knew I wanted something greater for myself and through the cafe I feel that my life is just opening up like a flower. The cafe has taught me that I am very resilient and it's also taught me that people are kind, especially the customers that come here. They're very aware of the reason why the Community Matters Cafe is here. The vibe is just really, really nice. It's just a great day every day at the cafe. My hope for the future is that I would connect with someone here at the cafe that will see the potential in me and offer me an opportunity for employment, but I'm just staying open and um, let God find, help me find my way. Hi, I'm Meredith Delari, and I'm a new board member who has seen the transformative power of Charlotte Rescue Mission for six years. However, I am also an alcoholic and an addict. As you see me standing here today, keep in mind that someone sitting next to you might be suffering in silence. It might even be a family member. I spent 18 years struggling with my addiction and alcoholism. I suffered in the public eye. I suffered in silence. I suffered and struggled and could not find the right solution for me. And I know that at one point I really had a chance to get sober when my kids were really young. I've been in multiple treatment centers. I've had all kinds of help. And I really want to convey that we're doing the right things here at the Charlotte Rescue Mission, especially when it comes to helping mothers like me at the Dove's Nest. We have the right length of programs. We have the, the right mix of 12 steps and spiritual transformation. That's how it's gonna make it work. I have worked with the women at the Dove's Nest for the past six years. I've seen their transformation. I've sat in rooms listening to stories of men from Rebound who have been out of the program now for two years and they're still all hanging out together. It is the coolest thing ever and they're sober and they love each other. 
And many of them came in as atheists and they now love Jesus Christ. And they swore that they never would. And they laugh about it now in the rooms. And it is amazing to see. And that's why I'm standing here. And that's why I am telling you that we have to do more. We have to help. Here at the Charlotte Rescue Mission, we do it for free. We do not rely on government funding. We do not rely on United Way funding. 70% of our budget comes from individuals like you. We are privately funded. Have you been inspired by what you heard today? Do you want to stand by our hurting, helpless and hopeless people and give them hope, give them the power of transformation? Then please do consider a gift. Our goal today is $250,000. That will break the cycle for a hundred people. A family of one of our donors has also committed to matching gifts up to $25,000. Wow, that is 10 more lives that we can help save. In fact, I'm about to make my donation to support a woman through the Dove's Nest program because that is near and dear to my heart. I want to help a woman become a functioning member of her family to be not just physically present, but emotionally present because that is what I needed to be. Reflect on how you can make a difference. Truly, I believe this is the most beneficial program that we have in Charlotte. We have to help. Charlotte Rescue Mission is grateful for your support. We're grateful for your, your participation tonight and we look forward to working with you to transform lives. Thank you for joining us for our first ever virtual event at Charlotte Rescue Mission and taking the time to learn about the work we do every day. We appreciate you getting to know Javon, Simon, and Adele and opening your hearts to them. They are the real reason we are here. They had hope and they got the help they needed because of individuals like you. Your support makes their story and many other stories of transformation possible. We hope you are moved to share these stories with others others who may need help or who would want to help us continue to change lives. From all of us here at Charlotte Rescue Mission, we wish you many blessings. And one last thing, as you make your donation, please stay with us for a few more minutes. There's some folks that would like to say thank you. I'm thankful for Charlotte Rescue Mission for giving me a second chance at life and finding a new way to live. I'm very grateful for Charlotte Rescue Mission and saved my life. I'm a graduate of, of Charlotte uh, Rescue Mission, and I'm grateful to be here at the uh, cafe. Um, I'm very grateful because it gave me a second chance at life. Um, I get to rebuild relationships with my family and be in my daughter's life again. I'm thankful for them giving me the opportunity to work on myself and correct some of my character defects. Uh, I'm thankful for Charlotte Rescue Mission because it gave me a second opportunity to start over. Uh, my life was pretty bad shape, and uh, they showed me that I'm not alone and I have people just like me out there, and uh, they showed me that people care.
He is wonderful.